I often get asked about tracking in Final Cut Pro now that we have built-in tracking. And a lot of people want to know, is M-Tracker 3D worth it? You might have seen M-Tracker 3D in action in my recent video about the Monogram Creative Console. The built-in tracker from Final Cut Pro and M-Tracker 3D from Motion VFX are totally different trackers. And in this video, I'm going to explain how they differ and whether or not M-Tracker 3D is for you. So let's talk about the main difference between Final Cut Pro's built-in tracker and M-Tracker 3D. It's kind of in the name, M-Tracker 3D. Final Cut Pro's tracker works in 2D space, meaning that you can track the movement of an object on screen and make text or an image or a graphic or another video follow that object as it moves across the screen. M-Tracker 3D, however, tracks the camera movement of a shot and allows you to add text, graphics, or other 3D objects into the scene as if they were part of the scene to begin with and were visible when you shot the footage. Now that you understand the fundamental difference between Final Cut Pro's tracker and M-Tracker 3D, you might be excited to know that M-Tracker 3D has undergone some massive improvements, which gives us significantly improved tracking accuracy and up to five times faster tracking. M-Tracker 3D was already pretty quick. You might have seen that in my previous video where I went through M-Tracker 3D in great detail. I'll link to that down below if you'd like to check it out. On top of the improvements to M-Tracker 3D, Motion VFX also released two new packs of amazing templates, the Neon and HUD packs. Let's have a look at an example of each, starting with the HUD pack. For this example, we're going to turn this shot into this. And to do that, all we need to do is add the M-Tracker 3D plugin to the clip and then hit track. We'll let M-Tracker 3D do its thing and when it's done, we'll just hit copy track. Then we'll head over to our title effects and in the HUD pack, we have this Surface 4 template that I'm going to use. So I'll just drag that on top of my clip, sync it to the beginning and extend it to the end of the clip. I'll select this and I'll hit paste track to paste that track that we just copied from the M-Tracker 3D plugin and I'll hit OK. Next, you want to hit this little button and then I'm going to hold down shift so that I don't change my orientation and I'm going to select a point of contrast here like this section of the bridge. As you can see, we've got this effect or this template tracked to that point. Next, I want to go ahead and adjust the rotation. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to adjust the rotation a little bit maybe something like that. And I'm going to scale this up so that I can cover all the water. Let's go a little bit more just to give ourselves a little bit of room. And I'm going to also go ahead and adjust the grid settings here. So I'm going to change this grid density to 30 on horizontal and vertical. And I'm going to set the grid line width to two. If we quickly play that back as is, you'll see that those grid lines are tracked perfectly to the shot, but we need to remove this area around the coastline and the bridge to finish off this look. To do that, simply hold down Alt and drag and drop this layer on top of the surface layer. And I'm going to delete the M-Tracker 3D plugin from here and set the opacity to 50%. Then I'll come over to my effects browser, add a draw mask effect, and I'm going to draw a mask around this coastline here. So let me zoom in and mask that out quickly. I'll set the opacity back to 100% and then I'm going to feather off these edges a little bit to about there. Now the time consuming part is adding keyframes to these control points. I'll add it to the transform position parameter of the mask as well. And then it's a case of going through the shot and just moving this mask and making sure that all these points line up to what you've just masked out. And that might take a little bit of time just to get it looking right. You might need to do it frame by frame depending on how complex your mask is. And when it's done, this is the final result. There's also the new Neon Pack for M-Tracker 3D. In this example, we want the camera to basically fly past the text like this. So let's add M-Tracker 3D to our clip and we'll hit Track. I'll go ahead and copy the track and then I'll grab this Typography 3 preset and drop that onto my clip and I'll extend it to match the duration of the clip. I'll go ahead and paste the track and hit OK. Next, I'll go ahead and change this text to Budapest. And I'm also going to turn off the global reflection over here to get rid of that reflection. And I'm going to change the color to something a bit more orange so it matches the lighting in the background a little better. That looks pretty good. I'm also going to turn the animation in and out properties off so that this text doesn't animate in and out. And then I need to select a point 
to which this text will be tracked. So I'll select it over here and I'm probably going to choose a spot in the water. So I'll select a point in the water over here and then I'm just going to move this text a little bit to the left and I'm actually going to drop this box down and I'm going to change the Z position to push this text closer to the camera. I think somewhere around there should work and I might just drop this text a little bit as well. If we scrub through here to see what that looks like, you can see it's tracked really nicely and the camera moves right past the word Budapest. So now this shot is 17 seconds long, which is a little bit too long. So I'm going to apply a speed ramp. What I'll do is select both these layers, hit Alt G to create a compound clip. I'll just call it Budapest and I'll scrub forward a little bit here, maybe somewhere around here. I'll start the speed ramp. So I'll hit Shift B to create a speed cut and I'll move all the way forward until I pass the text over here and I'll hit Shift B to create another speed cut. For the section in the middle, I'm going to speed that up to 20 times speed and I can adjust these speed ramp handles to smooth out that speed ramp, make it nice and smooth, something like that. And here is the final result. If you're wondering, is M-Tracker 3D for me? Do I need it even though I have tracking built into Final Cut Pro? If you're wanting to add track titles or graphics to your edits that make them look like they're part of the scene, then absolutely, yes you do. You can get the M-Tracker 3D Essential Bundle, which includes the plugin itself and three expansion packs, the titles, captions, and pointers packs. You can get the plugin on its own as well, and you can buy the expansion pack separately. If you'd like to dive deeper into M-Tracker 3D to see if it's right for you, then watch this video over here, which is a detailed review and tutorial of the plugin. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to let me know in the comments down below.